Doesn't look like much, does it? It's a very simple pattern. Look at it. Take a good look. You move it all around, it just looks like bits of fluff on a hook. And I gotta tell you, this thing comes alive in the water. The Taboo Caddis, designed, created, and put together by, I believe, Steve Schweitzer of Whiting Farms. One of the absolute most deadly flies on the face of the earth. There are many ways to fish a Taboo Caddis. Swinging it in fast water like my buddy Mike is doing here on the Rapid River at Lakewood Camps is a great way to produce landlocked salmon and nice big brook trout. But it's not limited to that. It also produces on the placid east branch of the Delaware, notoriously technical water. All right, so here we go. We are talking about the Taboo Caddis, a great fly. A couple of things you need to know before you get started with the Taboo Caddis. First off, and I feel a little like Vanna White here, this is a box that is with me all the time on the river. The whole box is full of Taboo Caddises. There's a couple of bead heads where you can see the light reflecting. My buddy Mike tends to take a number of my bead heads. And there's a few different colors. We've got a rusty brown, we have an olive, we have a gray, but mostly they're in this pale yellow color. It's such a great fly. I never, ever, ever go for trout without it. Now, what, how do you tie a caddis, uh, a taboo caddis? How do you work it out? It's all about this, which is a soft tackle with chickaboo pelt that Whiting makes. The whole fly is tied from one of these feathers with the originator, Steve Schweitzer, he really liked a vinyl rib. I'm kind of partial to a fine wire rib. That's it. Everything else is a feather that goes right here. Fantastic fly. Super productive. Strongly recommend that you fish this pattern. It's time to tie the Taboo Caddis, a wonderful, fantastic fly. And of all the flies I've ever fished, I think this fly has humbled me more than any other and taught me really about um, how important it is to realize what we don't know. And what I mean by that is the following. Um, I, I read Gary LaFontaine's book about caddis flies, and I was hung up on this sparkle bubble, this shock around the body, and I didn't think any pupa that lacked that shock around the body with the sparkle would be any good. Um, and I had several people over the years tell me that this was an excellent fly and we really should give it a shot. And uh, I kind of poo-pooed them and thinking in my arrogance that there's no way that fly will work because it doesn't fit what LaFontaine said. And the truth is that what LaFontaine said is in and of itself a very true statement, but it's not the only way or the only attractive quality of a caddis fly. It's a major attractive quality of a caddis fly, but not the only. So, in the taboo caddis, it, it emphasizes other traits of emerging caddis, and they have proven to be... Um, you fish this fly a little different, but it's been as deadly or more deadly than the LaFontaine emerging pupa. So, it's a great pattern, it really is. And now we'll start tying it together. All right. So, um, without even discussing it, the first thing I did was tie in a piece of brass wire. This is the only part of the fly that I did differently than Steve Schweitzer. Steve likes to do some um, vinyl rib kind of thing. I'm sure it works great. I just go with a little bit of flash because I like a little bit of flash in my flies. i got a nice little base of thread done here, and as I've shown in other videos, if you stop at the hook barb, generally above there is where the shank of the hook begins to bend. Okay, so, this particular fly, as I discussed a moment ago, is tied completely with um, the whiting soft tackle with chickaboo patch that we can see. And the first feather that you take looks like a marabou plume, but because it comes from a chicken, it's not that, um, it's not as long as a regular marabou plume. And then you take this fiber, or this feather, and... I do my judgment, and, and you got to play with it until you, you're satisfied with what you like, but I hope you can see right in here that the stem starts getting a little bit thicker. So I like to separate it just before it starts getting a little bit thicker, which is right about here, 
and I will then take that, take this particular piece, and make a tuft of a little tail right there. And it's also worth noting, I'm just going to take two turns, one, two, to hold it in place. And I'm going to pause for a minute and talk a little bit about the hook I'm using. Um, this hook is a Gamagatsu pattern, an S10 2S. And what this fly does, or what the hook does, it's a very heavily weighted hook. And this particular pattern is going to be used in very fast pocket water, riffly water. So I want one that gets down a little bit. I will tie the same exact fly on a dry fly hook and fish it in a spring creek and it'll do really well with that. A friend of mine who just loves this fly and is absolutely deadly with it, he'll take the fly and he'll put a bead head on the top and he'll almost fish it like a nymph, and not almost like a nymph, he'll fish it like a nymph, um, high, line, high stick nymphing and do really well with it. Okay, so I'm going to bring the body up to about two hook eye lengths behind the hook eye and then I'm going to spin this feather not too 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 tight but tight enough um, I wish I had a better description than that for you I really don't and I just work the feather up and each time I, I take a turn I tighten up a turn okay I'm making a, a body here that's going to be very full of motion and that is one of the other attractive qualities of caddis fly nymphs is that they can be extremely mobile in the water not necessarily moving super fast like a lot of the old books say because La Fontaine pretty much debunked that for the most part except for a few isolated species but what it does do is the legs are kicking like crazy and yes there is that sparkly bubble sheath and I think maybe the little piece of brass wire I have there helps a tiny bit with that but man oh man is this bug moving these are very, very active bugs. Some mayfly nymphs just slowly rise to the surface almost like a balloon with a lack of uh, motion to them. Not so most caddis flies. Most caddis flies go up there rowing like a crazy with those legs going out of there. Uh, going very, very, very fast, beating all over the place. That's why soft tackles work so well. And likewise, this pattern. Okay, so I just locked that in. The stem is pretty thick right here, so I'm, I'm not going to have the chance to bend it back, though I usually like to do that. Pulling the, fiber, the fibers out of the way for a second here, and I'm just going to lock this down. And I literally tie onto um, the feather that I already tied in. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is take this particular piece of brass and I'm going to wind it toward the eye of the hook and just use it as a counter rib to help um, secure all the materials because they are a little fragile and by having this there I add a little tiny touch of flash and I reinforce the body okay three four I really should have a hackle plier to do this but as I look around on the table that I'm tying this on and with the video, I don't see a hackle plier, so just bear with me for just one moment. I really should have one. Life would be much simpler with one. All right, and and presto, I've just reinforced all of that fragile, soft, feathery stuff basically a marabou plume from a chicken with this brass wire and the brass wire is another nice thin material so I will bend this one back and lock it in as I love to do with materials to build super durable flies use the inside part of your scissor to cut that okay now um, doesn't it all look like that super streamlined buggy one I showed you to start with and if you look at this it's kind of like all over the place um, you could probably fish it just like this and take some fish based on action alone but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pluck the fibers I'm going I see where the tail is right here and I want to make these about as long as the tail or slightly longer and with marabou you do not cut 
with your scissors, you it's soft enough that you'll have no problem with your fingers just plucking and breaking them off in half. Okay. Now I know that this looks. I can only imagine on the video that this looks very, um, very uh, full, perhaps too full. And sometimes they do come out a little bit full. In fact, I'm trimming this one back a little bit to show you that you can do it. Um, I don't think it's a big deal because when it gets wet, what looks so full here will get very, very sparse. In fact, I'll show you that right now. Put a little saliva on it, and you can see that this is a lot sparser than you think it is. At least I think the word sparser is a word that exists. Okay. So the fly is almost done, believe it or not. It's such a, a simple pattern. Now, the next type of feather that we're going to use, so the first feather was the marabou type feather. The next type of feather is um, basically the wet fly hackle that you would get off of it. Now, I do like to trim out the middle section as I, as I think it can get a little bit bulky when that middle section's in there. And then I just kind of look for a point where I think I've got enough material on there and in this case it's about halfway a little more than halfway down the stem and this is the toughest part of the fly you're gonna put this right over the top here move it up a little bit and take a loose turn and then a second loose turn and then just slide that feather up and you want to get it so that it lays flat on the back that's the key here and mine's coming off a little bit if you find it that you're having a hard time getting it to lay flat on the back. Just try it again. Don't worry about it. All right, so as I'm looking at mine, I'm pretty happy with this. It's not perfect, but with a little bit of TLC right there, I got it perfect. So I go back with a couple loose loops turn toward the bend of the hook, and that'll kind of give it a guide, a funnel, if you will, of thread to keep it in place. Now I take a turn or two forward, and now I start cranking down. And I'm locking this sucker right in place. Okay, um, I don't want to make the head too bulky, so I am going to cut off at this point. I'm not going to fold that stem back. And the last thing I have to do is make a thorax in that head area. And to do that, I just put a little bit of wax on my thread. And now I'm going to go back to what I used before in the stems of these feathers and there's a dark section right in here. I like the thorax to be a little bit darker so I'm going to pluck from that dark section and then I'm going to put them right up on the thread and dub it on as you would dubbing. All right? You don't need to do it any different. The wax will catch the fibers. I'm going to wrap it back over it so it's going to be reinforced by the thread. A little bit more not much more, just a little bit more. All right. All right, very good. See, I start by the eye, work my way back, and go forward again toward the eye. And I didn't even need all of that extra that I put on there. Comes off nice and easily. Time for a whip finish. Now, before I take this fly out of the vise, look at how buggy this fly is. Now, keep in mind, I am not even looking at it from your point of view. I'm looking at it from my point of view. It looks slightly bulky. I'm telling you, as soon as you wet it, it's going to sparse right out. But it's alive in the water. This fly pulses and breathes in the water. You can swing this pattern. I love swinging this fish and wet flies in a riffle. It's fantastic. Um, you can fish it in a pocket, but my favorite way to fish this fly by far is to use it as a dropper off of the parachute caddis. And between those two flies, catch a lot of fish. Using them as searching patterns through pocket water, um, sometimes through riffles, though I usually like to swing it through a riffle, or if I see dry flies rises in an area, but I don't see a mayfly hatch going on, and I suspect that they're on caddis, I'll put this guy on, and it does fantastic. Another really good dropper is a serendipity. Those two flies used as droppers off of a parachute caddis or 
um, and iris caddis are a fantastic combination. Now just to show you what you're getting at when you wet this guy, here you go. Here you go. Nymphs are pretty nondescript, simple looking creatures. And this is shaped like a nymph, looks like a nymph. And as soon as you put this into water, this sucker is going to breathe like you wouldn't believe. It's going to look like a caddis fly kicking for all it's got to get to the surface. Excellent fly. Tie the taboo. Fish the taboo. Thank you, Steve Schweitzer. I've caught a lot of fish because of your pattern.